starting by choosing some backgrounds. Welcome to week seven of my 100 collage papers. For collage papers 40 through 46, I'm revisiting techniques I used on tissue paper in week one and I believe week two. And if you're wondering about the math, since I already had Sunday videos for art prompts, I decided to do my 100 day videos on Wednesdays. So week one only had four papers. Collage paper number 40 is revisiting a semic writing, one of my favorite things. And this is the easiest and smoothest technique for it. I'm using the tip of a handle of a small brush over a layer of Liquitex Basics acrylic paint spread with my favorite Simply Simmons Extra Large Number 50 Filbert brush. Next, I'll do the same thing, but on a dark background with a lighter paint. It's an artist loft tube I got on sale. I don't like it as well as Liquitex Basics, but I liked this color. Parchment. I'm going to have to get some unbleached titanium sometime. Oh, there was another color I've seen someone use that's similar to this that I was interested in. But for now, I should have covered my work surface, as is not uncommon for me. I put down too much paint, but it did create that ideal smoothness. It's so nice to just be able to move my brush through the paint. It's very easy on sore fingers. If you're unfamiliar with what acemic writing is, it is writing with no literal meaning. It can be therapeutic and looks really interesting. This background has a metallic sheen to it and I want it again to go with a lighter color. The parchment was too close a shade so I added some Liquitex Basics Titanium White. When I do a semic writing, I tend to have thoughts of words in my head and it allows me to write what I'm thinking without writing what I'm thinking is a way I've used to describe it in my art prompt videos. For my 100 collage papers on tissue, it was number two. Number one was my most common tissue paper painting technique for my tissue paper collage, applying acrylic paint to a wet sheet of tissue paper. I started with my Liquitex Basics Thalo Blue and Cornacridone Magenta. I'm comparing printer paper on the left to cardstock on the right. My spray of water and a good amount of slightly globby paint in my brush. Like doing a semic writing in a layer of paint, spreading the acrylic paint through water moves so much more smoothly. The papers lost some of their vibrancy in the drying process, and this really does work better for tissue paper, I think. I did create an accidental special effect with some water droplets, which is a similar effect to what's coming next. But before moving on, here are some interesting effects I got with the water and acrylic paint on cardstock that I had crumpled up. I like how it has gotten dark in the creases. And the second one, I also splattered with paint that was still on my brush. And it doesn't just look like splatters, it also spread through the water. I like to use pieces of MDF, medium density fiberboard, because they limit mess, are slightly absorbent, and while they can absorb excess water, the papers typically don't stick unless a lot of paint gets between the surfaces, which can typically be dealt with by lifting the sheets as they start to dry. These boards are thick and rigid enough to be portable, so I can be working on more things at once as I use wooden blocks to stack them. It's very convenient to work on batches of collage papers with multiple layers. You can find this thickness of MDF boards at local home improvement stores, and it's relatively inexpensive if you can cut it yourself. I don't know of any type of store that doesn't charge per cut. As you saw, collage paper 42 starts the same as 41 with water and acrylic paint. I didn't get quite enough water. This paint wasn't quite wet enough, so I added more water. And for this round, table salt. 
for both salt experiments, I continued to use printer paper and cardstock. This is the same as the table salt, but with coarse kosher salt. I realized I should work on one page at a time so they would be wetter. And you may be able to notice that there are two sheets of printer paper. I inadvertently found a way that helped keep my paper flatter. After the salt pages are completely dry, it's time to brush off all of the salt and check out the results. As I mentioned, these weren't quite wet enough, but they're still interesting. And as it seems like I've been saying a lot lately, they give you an idea of what is possible with the technique. And on to the coarse salt. Yes, the water makes the paper curl. Brush off the salt. This one didn't turn out as impressive as I would have liked either, but there are some good spots. This cardstock is definitely going to require some flattening and perhaps didn't have as much pigment as ideal. Moving on to collage paper number 43, which is alcohol. Starts the same with printer paper and cardstock sprayed with water. I am again using Liquitex Basics, Thalo Blue, and Quinacridone Magenta. Round one using a spritz of 91% isopropyl alcohol. First on the printer paper and then on the cardstock. Mixed results. Followed by the same process, but this time instead of just a spritz of alcohol, big drops. I just pour some in my hand and dribble and flick it on. It would appear that my printer paper was a little too dry in most places. Cardstock goes a little better. And here they are dry. Instead of just dribbling your isopropyl alcohol on your paper, you can also use a pipette to be more precise and create more defined, less blobby areas. This one's not very impressive. So it became the base for collage paper number 44, alcohol layers. Same technique, spraying it down with water, and this layer is dioxazine purple. More alcohol, and allow each layer to dry. Yes, this paint layer was a little thin, but does enhance what we started with. Next is quinacridone magenta and dioxazine purple. It also turned out to be not quite pigmented enough, so I decided that instead of waiting for it to dry, I would just immediately add more quinacridone magenta. The paint didn't seem quite watery enough for the alcohol to be effective, so I added some water, spread it out with the alcohol and water again, and then added alcohol, which this time had more of an effect. I do enjoy watching it spread through the paint layer. Still didn't find this one particularly inspiring, so decided to try a thin layer of silver, which didn't turn out thin enough and wasn't watery enough for a spritz of alcohol to be sufficient. So yeah, it was better before the silver layer, and my silver craft paint would probably have been a better idea. I decided to do another round of alcohol layer experimentation and change up my color palette. Base layer of yellow, which I allowed to dry. Brilliant yellow green and, okay, yeah, that low blue. And I had made sure there was plenty of water so the alcohol had thin but pigmented enough color to work with. Now that's the effect we are going for, at least in most of the areas of the paper. After it was dry, another good spray of water and another layer of thalo blue. I don't know why the camera wasn't picking up how much of the yellow was actually showing, but look at these results. So cool. For collage paper number 45, I did some painted backgrounds, which I'm not including because, well, this video is already getting pretty long. I created the backgrounds to experiment with a black alcohol layer over color. I first tried straight Liquitex Basics Fluid Acrylic in Mars Black, my blacker black. 
As you can see, it was not watery enough. I decided to try to add some water to paint that was still wet enough to mix with it. And I think it would be fun to, at some point, experiment with having a layer of partly dry black to create that grungy look you see over the color. But that's for another time. I moved on to water and fluid acrylic with my background taped down with scotch delicate surface tape. Back to a spray of water followed by the paint. It looks really cool moving through the water. And yes, that inspired another experiment that failed, so I will revisit that in the future. Spread out the paint and add the alcohol. You can immediately see that it is having the desired effect. But again, the camera confuses me because this did look way more black, blacker in person. Since I know an expensive acrylic craft paint can work with the alcohol, that was the third experiment for this paper. Fascinating movement of paint through water again. And the acrylic craft paint performs quite well. It would probably look more impressive with more color variation like the previous page, but it's doing what it's supposed to do. Unlike the straight fluid acrylic, it has very distinct results, but not quite that of the water and fluid acrylic. And trying out something else that was going to take too long for collage paper number 46, I remembered I have black cardstock and decided, hey, why don't I try alcohol on colored paint on a black substrate? Bright spring green and some yellow and pink. And well, although it didn't look at it first, overall just too much paint. So why not bring something else back from this week? Acemic writing through paint. And the alcohol, although the paint is a little thick. So yes, so far, as far as the alcohol, having the black substrate isn't that impressive. How about some silver and some titanium white? But wow, yeah, I can already tell that's really thick. Let's try the brayer this time. Yeah, that is thicker than it is watery. But let's see what happens. Add some water to help the alcohol. Smooth it again. Alcohol again. I don't know whether to say this is more operator error or the black cardstock not being the best substrate. So onward. Wow, my cadmium yellow deep hue is pretty empty. I'll augment with some primary yellow before moving on to some cornacridone magenta, which I will, well, also running out of, but will lighten with light pink. Back to my favorite paintbrush to blend my colors. And yeah, I'm thinking I probably got too much paint again. Alcohol. Yes, too much paint. More water and only the excessive excess paint in my brush. So the paint is watery enough for the alcohol to spread well, but it doesn't cover the paper very well. And you'll see in a moment, it dried even less pink. I hadn't noticed I had grabbed two sheets this time, so I took the page that had a little bit of pink overflow on it and used it for some of my silver acrylic craft paint, which got mixed with some of the paint still in my brush, and the combination did not work well with the alcohol. So working our way back through the results, silver, which looks interesting on the black, so I might do something with it again, but not with alcohol. As I mentioned, the pink is mostly gone, but there is some interesting effect from the alcohol. 
I accidentally skipped one here that the alcohol had very little effect on. But this looks interesting, though I don't know that the alcohol added much to that. But I guess it did contribute to the texture. And back to the aesthetic writing. I kind of like what the alcohol adds to this, where the paint isn't too thick for it. Thank you for joining me for this week's segment of my 100 collage papers. I will be back next week with seven more and every day with a short for each of them, as well as my regular Sunday creative self-care small art prompt to encourage us all to take time for art.